My hands are freezing. I want to solve this problem once and for all. It's really cold outside. I do have a jacket and thick socks on, so the rest of my body's warm, but my hands are still cold. But have you heard of gloves? And yes, I have, but when you go outside with gloves on and you play in the snow or you make snowballs or touch things that might be wet, your gloves eventually get soaked. And when you have soaked gloves, your gloves get cold and that makes your hands cold. So eventually you just end up taking your gloves off and that leaves you with cold hands. And you try to pull your hands into your sleeves, rub them together, try to warm them up, but it doesn't work very well and you just end up miserable for the rest of the time that you're outside. So I want some way to actively heat my hands rather than just insulate them from the cold like gloves would do. But have you heard of hand warmer packs? And again, yes, these hot hands hand warmer pouches exist where you tear them open and shake them a little bit and they become hot. But I imagine those are pretty expensive. Oh, $14 on Amazon, that's that's not bad actually. Uh, anyways, they're still not reusable and you have to open a new one and throw it away each time. So I'm gonna try to make my own. I'm not that great at chemistry, so I probably couldn't make one of these or make a reusable version of one of these, but I am good at electronics. And recently, I had a friend give me all of these heating pad stickers that you usually put on a 3D printer build plate to heat it up. So we're gonna use some of these to make an electrically powered hand warmer, or a pair of hand warmers, one for each hand. The only problem with using these heat bed stickers is they're meant for 3D printer beds, so they understandably get pretty hot. Ow. These things can get up to 80 Celsius, which for my American friends in Imperial units is around 175 Fahrenheit. So close to boiling. <laughs> Oh, that's hot. That's hot. And that's not something you want to hold in your hands. The solution to this problem is pretty simple. We can just turn the potentiometer on the heated beds and they should limit themselves with a thermistor to around 50 degrees or something more comfortable to hold in your hand. This little circuit at the top samples a sensor called a thermistor. The circuit then compares this temperature reading to a value set by the potentiometer and then regulates the temperature of the heater based on that. Whoops, I forgot that these heaters run on 5 volts and not 12 volts, so I accidentally fried one by sending it too much power. Good thing that these are cheap and I have a lot of spares. So what's the actual plan for making these hand warmers? What's the design? Well, the plan is that we're going to get a metal tube, preferably copper, because copper has a very high conductivity of heat, and we're going to stick the heating pad on the inside of the tube, and then when that heating pad heats up, it'll heat up the tube, and if you're holding that little section of tube, then your hand will heat up as well. To power it, the plan is that we're going to take this circular power bank and put it inside the tube so that it's all compact and add an on-off switch to turn it on and off. Now, I drew out the dimensions of my power bank and how big this should be and left space for insulation between the heating pad and the power bank and did a few calculations and I figured out that I should get a tube with an outer diameter of around one and three quarters inches and about a wall thickness of eighth of an inch, and that'll fit everything in there pretty nicely. However, I looked online on McMaster Car, and these tubes were pretty expensive. It was something like 30 or $40 for a foot. So instead of that, I'm gonna try to get a little bit creative and come up with my own solution. I thought about what looks like a tube, uh, what's made of metal, what fits in your hand comfortably, and I stumbled across these soda cans. Now, they're not normal soda cans, they're a little bit thinner and a little bit taller, but they should fit my power bank perfectly. They fit in a hand or a glove nicely, they're the perfect size for my power bank, and they're made of metal. It's almost a perfect solution. The one thing that could be improved by using a pipe instead of a soda can is that a pipe would have a little bit more thermal mass, but a soda can should work just fine. So let's get started on building this thing. So the plan is pretty simple. We cut off the top of the soda can. We take our heating bed sticker and we stick it to the inside of the soda can. If it doesn't cover the whole thing, that's okay. The heat should spread a little bit. 
Then we put our power bank in the middle, surrounded by some insulation. And then we wire up a USB port to the heater and add an on-off switch so that we can control when it's on and off with a switch instead of having to plug and unplug it from the power bank. Because the heater by itself draws about 3 amps and the power bank is only able to supply 2, we'll need to add a current limiting resistor into our circuit. This will limit the current to 1.5 amps. The resistor I'm using is a 1 ohm 5 watt resistor. This is the final hand warmer all put together. At room temperature, it starts around 25 degrees Celsius and it quickly reaches 40 Celsius after a few minutes. And there you have it, a power bank powered hand warmer that I can use next time I go outside in the cold. Oh come on! By the way, just a disclaimer and a side note for anyone thinking to build one of these, don't build one, or at least not like I did in this video. Due to this one being thrown together using whatever I already had lying around, while mine does work, it has a few problems of its own that I won't go into in this video. On another note, the channel just reached a thousand subscribers, so a big thanks to anyone who has already subscribed and gotten this channel as far as it has already come. And if you haven't subscribed yet, what are you waiting for? It's free and you can always change your mind later. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.